Manx Radio Sport. Good evening and welcome back to Friday Sport Preview. Rob Pritchard here, along with our sports team, as if to take a look at the sporting action coming up on the Isle of Man this weekend. On tonight's programme. Two Railway Cup hopefuls collide in the Premier League and we'll also be hearing from the boss of one of the top flight's new boys in Manx football. A triple header of Bella Fletcher between Vagabonds and Berry in rugby on Saturday and Sunday. Four remain across the competitions in Manx hockey as Cup semi-finals weekend beckons. And after another successful fortnight, FC Alabman return home this weekend, targeting a fourth straight win. That's all to come this evening. Welcome to Friday Sport Preview on Manx Radio. Glad to have you along. And as the uh, light once again fades outside with the winter approaching, the temperature is certainly rising across the Isle of Man's football divisions. At the top of the Canada Life Men's Premier League, the battle continues for the Railway Cup qualification spots going towards December. In Division 2, it is anyone's guess where that top, that second tier top spot could be going to in the coming weeks and months ahead. Or well, to go through the latest fixtures and uh, the latest chapters in those leagues, Leagues and of course the combination leagues this weekend is football correspondent Tony Metham. Tony, very good evening. Good evening, Rob, and uh, well done. I see you picked up on the two o'clock kickoffs. And just warning everyone out there: uh, tomorrow, apart from one game, it's two o'clock now because the lights have gone. We struggle towards the end, uh, so anyone turning up at two thirty is going to be missing half an hour of the game. Indeed, and just before we get started taking a look at the fixtures, uh, there has been one game called off that we know of already. Yeah, there has, and uh, we'll we'll have a look at this with the club because uh, I think everybody now feels that we've given them a fair crack at the whip, and that's uh, in combination one, uh, St George's against uh, St Mary's once again. Unfortunately, they're struggling there uh, for players. There's one or two clubs out there as well. Uh, we're trying to work with them, but um, you know, St George's, it's uh, a little bit too regular now, so they're going to have to make a commitment, yes or no. Thank you, Tony. So, yes, you just missed that a moment ago. Uh, the Canada Life Combination 1 game, St George's versus St Mary's, that's going to be awarded as an away walkover to St Mary's this weekend. St George's unable to field a team. While well, taking a look through these Saturday fixtures, then, as Tony's rightly pointed out, earlier kickoff times now for the next few weeks, two o'clock kickoffs instead of 2.30 across the board, with one exception that is an earlier kickoff in the Premier League, which we'll come to. Starting in the top flight, and uh, the first one we're going to take a look at here, Tony, is uh, two Railway Cup hopefuls. And uh, if uh, if on paper it's to be suggested, this could be a cracker at Billy Goat Park tomorrow. Foxdell versus Corinthians, both level on points. Corinthians only ahead on goal difference in fourth. Yeah, I think uh, Corinthians will be looking at it certainly seven days ago against Union Mills. Um, they felt a little bit hard done by. Uh, that's from their view of it. I'm sure Union Mills look at it differently. But I think, um, you know, certainly when you look at it, these two teams... They're right in the mix, but I didn't expect either of them to be there, to be honest with you. I think uh, they've both done really well. And it's down to uh, Anthony Corkle, the Foxdale manager, and also uh, Ben Qualtro as well at Corinthians. have really got the team playing well. When you look at uh, the teams that are out there for them, uh, Chester Bell, I think, will be in the team uh, tomorrow because one or two others um, are sort of injured or just uh, lacking in a bit of uh, form. But uh, when you look at other people, Connor Clark, you've got Sam Corkle, Nathan Little, I don't think he's in the team tomorrow. I don't think he's available. But that's pretty strong, that middle line for Corinthians. But we know what uh, the main part for Foxdale is at the moment is their forward line. But you've still got people like Stephen Betridge and other players in there at the back. Keep things tight. Andy Ball as well. Close game. I know you're going to watch it, Rob. And I think it's going to be an absolute belt up there as well. Pitch is in good condition. I'm going to go for the spoil and go for a share of the points. And that's a draw. Very well. Uh, you mentioned Nathan Little there. Can confirm he's in the FCL of Man yep. squad tomorrow yep. uh, at the Bowl on Saturday night. Elsewhere, down south at Croyt Lowy. Well, these may be two teams battling at opposite ends of the table, but of course, so much great history in this particular fixture. The old firm, as some people call it as well. Russian United up against Peel down south. And Tony Peel, of course, battling towards the top. Russian United, a disappointing start for them. But does the nature of this fixture and what's come before maybe just give it an extra flavour? Definitely does, Rob. And uh, when I saw it on the calendar, and it was just nice because obviously I can travel uh, down south, uh, watch the game and get back in time and not get told off by you. Uh, but over the years, when you've seen the red and white of Peel and that yellow and black of Russian, they're two sides. And when you look at the history, it would take forever to just rattle off what trophies that they've won. But 
different uh, sort of form at the moment for them, isn't it? Because uh, Peel, second in the league, keeping pressure on A United as well with Russian uh, way down in the league, ninth, tenth, I think it is. Mark Blair was superb last week uh, for Russian in goal. And when you look at young players coming through, Lachlan Denham, one, Joe Kelly, two. You know, they've got some good uh, players coming through. Scott Mason's going to have a busy afternoon, I think, at the back to try and deal with Thomas Brown. But uh, when I look at uh, Peel, they've had to bring one or two players in. Aaron Costain's come in at the back and uh, tried to tighten things up. Karen Christian as well, who's normally involved with the combination, has come in. So they know they've had to tinker with that. Paul Whitehead's looking fit. I think it's going to be a victory for the away side, and that's Peel. Very well. We did mention there is an early kickoff in the Canada Life Men's Premier League. It is at the bowl. 1.45 p.m. kickoff this one. Uh, St Mary's up against uh, St George's. And uh, Tony, St Mary's in eighth at the moment. Three wins from their opening nine. St George's second from bottom at the moment on seven points. Two wins from nine. So both teams could really do with the points at the moment. They could. And I think uh, St Mary's, when they look at the league table, they know sort of the uh, Railway Cup is, is not going to happen. I think um, it's too much of an ask for them. It still mathematically can happen. Uh, but when you look at uh, St George's, I thought last week's result against Russian was was very good. OK, they didn't score any goals. But when you look at uh, the players that they've got in there, and I just had a little look and there's uh, a band of talented when you've got Ryan Gartland, you've got Ash Higginbottom, Chris Bash, Sean Quay didn't play, Johnny Myers played, Kieran McNulty as well. Then, you know, they're old guards, but they're still very, very clever on the football field. And St Mary's pitch will suit them. That was their, like, their second home, wasn't it, from uh, Grand Country Road. But uh, I just, St Mary's Joe Berquist, you would want to mark him, his pace and everything else he offers down that right-hand side. But you've got Sammy Gellin in that midfield with Frank Jones. That's helped things. But I just think St Mary's will prove too strong, but St George's certainly, if they've got the full team out, can mix it. Elsewhere at Memorial Playing Fields, well, if we're talking on paper at least, you couldn't find two very different much different size, I should say, in the in the top flight. Moran at the bottom at the moment, yet to get points on the board. Uh, nine defeats from their opening uh, nine games. It's looking tough for them at the moment. And it doesn't look like it's going to get any easier for them, Tony, this weekend because they welcome this weekend the current defending champions and unbeaten so far league leaders, Air United. Yeah, we've spoke about this over the last couple of years where Moran seemed to come up with a, a surprise result, don't they? Appeal was the one that they used to always sort of be able to take some points away from, but uh, A United at the moment, I just can't see it. I haven't seen the Player of the Month awards or anything yet, but I'm sure Sean Kelly's right in the mix of that one because he's been tremendous hack trick for him last time. Danny Oram didn't play, so if he comes back in, that gives him an option. But they've got goals all over the place, and when you look, uh, Harry Best has been playing well, but you've got uh, people in there who, Danny Oram, he didn't play last week, so as I say, might just help things. Lewis Moran's there to cause havoc, and Moran... You know, it's just they've got to keep sort of going as they are. And, uh, you know, last week, a couple of goals. Carl Hartman got one. Ethan Reddy got the other one. you got Matthew Davies, Connor Gilbert. Big, strong lads in there to try and keep things nice and tight. But it's going to be a tough old game. It's a tighter pitch. And Airy used to play on a tighter pitch. So I've got to go for Air to win. Elsewhere, uh St John's United, a steady start for them in the in the grand scheme of things. Mid-table at the moment, seventh in the table on 12 points up against uh, an Onken team that are in 11th at the moment with uh, two wins so far, seven points on the board in total. So, uh, Tony, both of these sides on their day, I think you've pointed out a few times, uh, have the potential to show quality during those 90 minutes. It's just getting the consistency. Definitely, and I think, um, you know, I watched Onken against Peel and I just thought for the first quarter of an hour or so, they were good value. And then once they conceded that first goal, it, it was a little bit hard to take. And then they went down to 10. But it, it doesn't affect them. And I was talking to James before. And you know, I just look at it that, you know, I'm kind of young players. They're coming in, they're learning the trade. And it's linking well together. And they've got a nice feeling at the club, which always helps. And uh, St John's, I think um, you won't know this, but uh, Damian Petkoff is going to play in goal tomorrow because uh, Styx isn't available. Sam Ingham needs to be playing out in field alongside Will Penn Holrick. So that just alters it a little bit as well. We'll have to see if uh, Callum Taggart's back in. He didn't play last week. He was away, but I would say he'll start tomorrow. And uh, with him and Dean Lees on that right-hand side, on can know what they've got to deal with. Pace on the right-hand side and, you know, a mastercraft, if you like, in the middle because Callum's a good player. But uh, when I look at uh, Onken, you know, 6-2 win against Moran, that's pretty good. And Andy Asbridge is finding his feet now. I just think St John's will slightly, I'm sorry to say this, have the edge. I really am sorry. 
Don't fall out with me, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to be hearing more from the Onken perspective in the next few minutes as well. And uh, last game in the Canada Life Men's Premier League this weekend up at the Balaclone Stadium, Ramsey versus Laxey. Now, Tony, if this fixture had taken place toward the latter end of last season, um, some of the bookies might have put their money on Ramsey, but they're a bit out of sorts at the moment in terms of results. And Laxey up in third at the moment on 21 points, three clear of Corinthians and Foxdale. So right in Railway Cup contention. Uh, Johnny Palmer's Laxey must, must fancy it this time around, would you think? They're flying. And I think it's down to one or two key players. Uh, Jack Keelan's one for me. He's, he looks really promising in that centre-forward role for uh, Laxey. But uh, Ben Ramsey as well as another one. And when you look at William Cowan, I think uh, he's back in, Will. And that's good to see Ethan Hawley. So there's four top young players. But with Ramsey, I just wondered what's going wrong. I've been looking at the team sheets and um, it, I think it's just down to one or two sort of players missing. And uh, when you look at uh, sort of Alfie Scott, Harry Blissett, Callum Hudson was on the bench last week, but he's really strong and he's a player for the future. You've got uh, Jack Gilbert as well and Graham Kennish is scoring plenty of goals. There's no doubt about it without Dylan Pickles at number 10. They're a different player and I think he's still carrying an injury, but I've got to go for Laxey. I think at the moment they're really flying. OK, turning our attention to Arden and Drug Unlimited, Division 2, just one point separates the top three going into this weekend. Braddon, top on 19 points. Douglas High School Old Boys, second. Same amount of points, but just behind on goal difference. And then Colby in third on 18 points, lost out, of course, to Douglas High School Old Boys at Blackbury Lane uh, last week as well. We'll start with the top two, Tony. Uh, Braddon, they have a trip to Castletown. Douglas High School Old Boys, they're also on the road at Rams Youth Centre and Old Boys. Yeah, but let's look at the uh, Castletown Braddon one. Just a quick an appeal first. Uh, we haven't got a referee for this one. Both clubs have been told that there's a problem here. Uh, so there's uh, anyone out there who's got referees' qualifications and is free tomorrow afternoon, uh, we'd love to have them uh, sort of at this game if they can because, you know, both clubs want to play. But, you know, Castletown against Braddon, when you look at Braddon's uh, score last week, tremendous, wasn't it? 10-2 against Michael. That's a really strong win. And uh, when you look at the players in there, Dan can raid with five. You've got Joe Burrows playing well. Then I would expect uh, Castletown with... Uh, good experience in there. Notice Paul Kamada still wearing the number one jersey. That's uh, Jack's dad. Uh, Nathan Cardi's in good form. Lucas Simmons as well. Ash Egan's experience at the back. But I think uh, Braddon at the moment are just playing some really good football and it'll be difficult to beat them. But Douglas High School Old Boys, as you mentioned, Tony, as well. Great result for them uh, last time out as well up against Ramsey Centre and Old Boys, who won't make it easy for them. No, they won't. And I watched Old Boys last week against uh, Colby. What a great game that was. Great advert for Division 2. And again, Stephen Clark, Martin King at the back defensively. OK, they're, well, I guess 40-ish. Uh, I know Kinger isn't. He's about 37, 38. But they still play really well. But uh, Jack Adams, when he come off the bench, looks so solid in that midfield and scored a good goal. Alex Ringham scored an absolute belter as well. Jacob Stones is scoring plenty of goals. And I have to give it again, a big mention for the goalkeeper, Nathan Quayle, was absolutely superb. But, you know, Jamie Brew and also... Um, Ross Crawford, good goal scorers for Ramsey Centre. It's going to be a close game, but old boys to win. And the other three games in Division 2, we mentioned Colby, only one point behind the top two in third. Southern Derby for them, they host uh, Malou, who were uh, unlikely to make it easy for them as well. Battle at the bottom, Douglas and District versus Governors Athletic, and also Paul Rose United at home to Douglas Royal. Uh, Tony, your views on those three? Yeah, just uh, Colby against Malou. Malou have got a few problems at the moment, one or two players uh, maybe moving. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens in that one. But Colby, I was impressed with them seven days ago, Rob. Uh, they've got a lot of quality up front. I thought Steve Collister and uh, certainly Carl Hickey look solid defensively. They look good. Jay, uh, Jay uh, in goal is, is really solid. But I just think, um, you know, Colby will be too strong for Malou. Uh, we've got uh, Douglas and Districts against Governors. I'm going to go for Governors to win this one. I think um, the the Big lads, they're solid, they're strong uh, and skillful, so I'll go for them to beat D&D. And Paul Rose against uh, Douglas Royal, I don't know what's going on because Douglas Royal have gained evidently quite a few players from Michael, which will make them stronger. Uh, Sam Greasley scored uh, last week, so that sort of helped things. Uh, but uh, Paul Rose also have got some good players in there, so hard one to predict, but I'll just go for Douglas Royal to take it. Very quickly, let's take a look through the combination divisions. Canada Life combination, one we already mentioned, St George's versus St Mary's has been awarded as an away walker to St Mary's because St George's is unable to field a team. But nevertheless, Tony, five more games there. Yeah, there is. Corinthians against uh, Foxdale, go with Corinthians to take maximum points in that. Peel against uh, Russian, Russian challenging at the top of the table. I'll go for them to win. Air United against uh, Moran, uh, well above Moran in the league, so I'll go for Air. Onken against uh, St John's, uh, Onken to win, top of the table, absolutely flying. And uh, even though St John's scored about 14 goals last week, 
that's going to be a tough to score 14 this week. And Laxey against uh, Ramsey, I have to go with Ramsey. And uh, rounding things off on Saturday, five games in Ardern and Drug Unlimited combination too. Yeah, Braddon against uh, Castletown, uh, Braddon to win. Uh, Jim's against Douglas Athletic, Douglas Athletic. Douglas High School, Old Boys against Ramsey Youth Centre. That's going to be a cracker. Go for Old Boys to win. Governors Athletic against D&D. Governors to take the victory. And Douglas Royal against Paul Rose. I'll just go for Douglas Royal. And uh, just very quickly, Tony, we've got about 60 seconds here, but just a reminder that on Sunday uh, sees the new Canada Life Women's Floodlit Cup format coming into play. Yeah, this is, these are just friendlies. We're just trying to out first to just gauge the strengths. But, um, yeah, there's some important games on. Laxey against Union Mills. Uh, Onka B against uh, Union Mills B. Corinthians will play Douglas Royal, Peel against Malou A and Onken A against Castletown. And those games all taking place at the ball, all starting with Laxey versus Union Mills from uh, 10 past two. Well, we do have another guest once again on the football side of things here in the Manx Radio studio this evening. One of two sides who have been promoted back into the top flight uh, from last season. They may have found it a little bit difficult in terms of points, but uh, no doubt picking up some positives throughout the season so far and hoping to build from there. Uh, we're joined right now by Onken first team manager, James O'Kelly. James, thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. Uh, first off, and uh, like to ask this uh, to the, all the managers who come on the show, I guess, depending on what time the season is, but uh, it's not been straightforward to start the season. Two wins from your opening nine, but uh, how do you feel it's gone? And I'm guessing you didn't expect it to be easy either. No, we didn't expect it to be easy. We, thought it, we always knew it was going to be difficult. Obviously, we were up two years ago, weren't we? And we came straight back down when we got promoted. Uh, so we knew it was going to be difficult. Uh, we brought in quite a few lads. Uh, I think it was five from Royals, one from Corinthians, uh, and re- most recently one from Michael as well. Uh, so it's take a little bit of time for them to gel. Uh, we've lost quite a few people from injuries as well. We have three people who started the cup final against Castan last season. We haven't seen yet this season. So they've been big players, especially our club captain, James Grouch, Tom O'Neill, Leo Fox. We haven't seen any of them yet. Um, and we missed Callum Dawson as well at the start of the season, our goalkeeper as well. So it's not been the easiest start, but we've picked up a bit of form recently in the month of October. So, yeah, hopefully keep going up. And you mentioned bringing some of the, the, the players into the current setup, and one of them, uh, Andy Asprich, who mm. starred last week with a hat trick as well. So, you know, having some of those key players who have that top flight experience to add into the quality you believe you already have, how important is that when you're going into the top level here? Yeah, I think that was important for us coming in. Uh, obviously, we brought in uh, Goz as a coach as well, which is a big plus. Um, and then bringing up the Royals lads in. Andy's got experience, scored 20 plus goals in the last two seasons. Hopefully, you can replicate that for us again this season. Um, I think he's on 89 so far this season. Um, and then, you know, players like uh, Luke Spots and Max Shirley bring some quality. James Callow as well. Uh, we've unfortunately lost James Callow now for probably quite a while with ligament damage in his ankle. Um, so, But these are just unfortunate things you've got to deal with over the course of a season, don't you know, these injuries. And in the games that maybe you haven't picked up any points so far or haven't picked up you know, maximum points, you've got one draw in there as well as long as the two defeats. Have you, sorry, the two wins, I should say. Have you seen enough in those games that says maybe it's just a few fine margins here? Yeah, I think we look at the first game of the season, we played Air, which was our opening game, because uh, I think our opening games was Air, Geordie's Peel, so it wasn't going to be an easy start. Uh, we played them on the Tuesday night and we lost 2-1. Uh, they got a penalty in the 90 plus 10th minute or something like that and we lost 2-1. So that was a good start for us. Uh, we weren't great against St. George's. Uh, George's deserved to win that. And then Peel, obviously we losing going down to 10 men. But we gave a good account of ourselves in every game we've played this season. Nobody's ran away with it. I know 5-0 looks like it, but playing 10 men for, I think it was 60 minutes against a good Peel side. Peel are one of the best teams I've seen play anyway. Um, and they scored two goals in the last two minutes of the game. So we have held a good account of ourselves, but we just need to keep improving to get some more points on the board. And not just the players on the pitch, you yourself, and uh, not just in the immediate term, but looking back a little bit as well, you know, you'll be one of the, the, the younger managers, but particularly in the in the top flight as well, you know, as, as someone, uh, I suppose, younger compared to some of the other coaches around you. And I mean that, of course, with the greatest respect to all the uh, fellow coaches across the Premier League. How do you find managing this situation, the team you've got, and with the expectations you may have of yourselves in the Premier League? Oh, I don't know. It was difficult coming in because I took the the job two years ago when we were in down in Division Two, and Davery stepped away. He kind of told me I was taking the job. Didn't ask me, just told me. Um, so, and I was privileged to be told I was having it. Uh, and it was a big thing for me is are they going to respect me are they going to listen to me just because of my age and fair play to the lads all of them have been brilliant with me um, and that was a big thing to help uh, we had obviously had a great season last season you know finished second won a cup um, had some really good battles with Foxdale and credit to where Foxdale are now they've done a great job um, but 
I've enjoyed it. I love doing this, um, but I want to keep make Onkin an established Division One team. I think the club deserves to be there from the junior setup, the committee members, the hard work that goes into that. And I think if we can, personally for me, if I can just maintain Onkin as a Division One team, I think it's a great advert for the juniors that we've got coming through. Because um, I know a lot of them when they turn 16, they tend to maybe go to other clubs because we were in Division Two. But if we're in Division One, we can hopefully keep a lot of these kids and push them into the combi in the first team and showed that path there for them and that brings me on quite nicely to my last question really got around 30 seconds here and in the more i suppose short to medium term where would you like to see yourself as a side in the next couple of months would you say whether it's in terms of uh, in terms of the table or anything else besides i think the goal this year is just to stay up just stay up worry about that and the next season we can look at developing um and getting pushed ourselves up the table but for yeah this season it's just don't get relegated James, thanks very much for your time. James O'Kelly, Onken, first team manager there. Well, after a successful fortnight out on the road, FC Alavman will be hoping to continue their top five charge and good form when they return home this weekend. Their latest visitors are newly promoted Abbey Hay, with both to face off under the floodlights of the bowl on Saturday night. In the reverse fixture, in late September, FC Alavman, FC Alavman emerged with a narrow 2-1 win, despite coming under plenty of pressure at times at the Abbey Stadium. Targeting a fourth straight win, Ravens manager Paul Jones explains what key threats their opponents might offer them this weekend. Manx Radio Sport. Yeah, they were very good set plays, especially second half. They threw caution to the wind, really, in the second half, and and they were yeah they they put a lot of pressure on us. And we tried to play out a little bit and got caught a few times. So no, I think you know they lost on on Tuesday night, but both their goals came from corners or set plays. So you know that's a big part of their game. They're very quick on the transition, trying to get bodies forward really quickly, and you know that was something that we just about coped with on the night in the away game. But yeah, we, they also play in a way that we feel that we can we can take advantage. So yeah, it's one that we know they're scoring a number of goals, but they also um, give teams opportunities to score as well. Um, so that, that's what we have to capitalise on. They, like a number of the other promoted teams, when you think of the likes of Stockport Town and an FC St Helens as well, seem to settle quite nicely into this league. So, you know, how impressive is that considering how you said on many occasions just how tough this league can be? Yeah. Really, really um, impressive. You know, all, all the promoted teams have you know started pretty well. I think you know, and in, in, in the main, which is which is good. It shows that I think they've kept most of their player groups together, which really helps at this level of football. That if you've got big turnover of playing staff um, year on year, then it, it makes it difficult for you for sure. So that's helped them come in and kind of hit the ground running really. And you know, they've had all had a really good start. The interesting bit now will be can they keep that going over the mid part of the season? It's a traditionally tricky kind of time. You've, you play an awful lot of games early on and then you've you know a lot of the teams are still playing Tuesday Saturday Tuesday Saturday so you know that puts a lot of pressure on the squad and you know it, it's when they start delving down into reserves or players being unavailable then then it, it'll be interesting to see how they how they go on we hopefully have gone through that part of our season now so um you know we're, we're looking at you know the strongest possible squads which we always do but you know so from a player availability point of view Saturday to Saturday makes it an awful lot easier for us and you know it'll be interesting to see how over the next eight to ten weeks the teams that have started the season well whether they can keep that going or not and on yourselves going into this weekend targeting a fourth straight win this weekend looking at those last two results against Longridge Town and uh, Chatterton last weekend that late comeback as well how much confidence has that given the group going into this one Lots of confidence, you know. I think we're in this place now. I, I think I, I can I can say it confidently that no matter what happens in the game, they know they've got enough to get back into it or to or to win it. So you know, Longridge, we go ahead and are fairly comfortable. I think first half and then have a little bit of a wobble, but have enough to see it through. And then Chalatin obviously going behind early, but no one panicked. And you know, we were we just stuck to what we were trying to do and got a little bit better through the game. And, and Boothy, you know, finished his chances fantastically well. So you know, I think we're in this place now where we're, we we know we can beat any team in the league and we're and we're also starting to do it and whatever happens within a game situation we're, we're calmer and more confident in terms of our ability to either capitalize on 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 the situation or to to hold firm and and, and see it through so so yeah in a really good place but it's an important eight week block now to to really kind of capitalize on the position that we find ourselves in going into this weekend again you look at uh, maybe what teams around you have been like um, a couple of teams dropping points during midweek as well so does this feel like a, a good opportunity given the fact that you've played still played several games more than some of the teams around you to stamp your position in those top five at the moment yeah it was I think we're we're in a place where it's important to keep winning and keep building points totals as, as you say there's you know I think some teams have still got four or five games on us and others have got two or three and 
you know, they, they all got all got to play each other, and we'll, you know, every manager will say they'd rather have points on the board than you know games in hand because you just don't know what's going to happen, especially at our in our league. So, um, yeah, the next kind of five six games are, are really important to consolidate the position where we are in the league because you know if, if we can win the fair majority, if not all of them, then um, and all the teams will lose around us, then we'll, we won't lose position in in where we are, and then that sets up twenty twenty five into quite an exciting yeah you know, three or four months. FC Alabama manager Paul Jones there, head of his side's tie with Abby Hay at the bowl tomorrow night. And uh, uh, Tony, you're not actually going to be alongside me in the uh, commentary booth tomorrow night, but uh, from FC Alabama's perspective, two tough games, particularly on paper on the road. They've come away with maximum points from both of them. Surely that lifts confidence in the camp. I don't think there's shortage of uh, confidence anyway, Rob, to be honest with you, because whichever players, we've said it now for the last few games, they're bringing new players in and they're just slotting in perfectly and you know, take my heart off to Luke Booth. He's absolutely flying, and you know, you five can just, goals in his last three games. Yeah, it's incredible. And one wonder goal, wasn't it? That uh, left footer. What a beaut that was. But you know, well done to the whole team. They've turned it around because we were a little bit concerned at the start, and it's looking good now. And it's coming up to the busy period as well for them. Nice to get back home after those two really good victories, and just the way they're playing football and the buzz in the in the club is brilliant and. It, it, it'd be really nice to see a big crowd because, you know, I've heard a lot about on the news today about Steam Packet and all stuff like that. And it costs a lot of money for teams to come over and teams to go over uh, to UK as well. And FC Alaman have to fund all that. So if they can get the support in there, it helps the coffers and um, it just improves the atmosphere as well because it's really good football to watch. Excellent. Well, uh, Tony, thanks very much. And also thanks once again to James O'Kelly, the Onkin first team manager, for joining us uh, here on Friday Sport Preview this evening. And don't forget, if you're not heading down to the bowl to watch that FC Alaban fixture tomorrow, we at Manx Radio have got you covered. Full live match commentary from 6pm on Manx Radio DAB and AM 1368 from myself and Darren Timpson tomorrow evening. Well, we are there just about uh, going to head to the news next. After that, we're going to be looking at a triple header of rugby. Manx Radio Sport. Welcome back to Friday Sport Preview on Manx Radio on Friday the 1st of November 2024. Turning our attentions to rugby now and it is going to be a very busy day indeed at Bala Fletcher. A triple header of matches coming up for Vagabonds men's, Vagabonds ladies and the Vagabonds juniors as well with one particular team in town across Saturday. And to go through it is our rugby correspondent uh, Dave Christian. So uh, Dave, kicking things off, it'll be uh, the Vagabonds ladies side who have had some positive results already in women's NC2 North South coming up against the first of the Berry teams to be playing at uh, Bala Fletcher this Saturday. Yeah, and uh, there's, there's quite different playing records for the two as well. Um, Berry haven't won yet. Vagabonds have played three, won one from three. Um, big defeat in the opening game, but since then, things are starting to look a little bit better for them. They beat Eccles at Bala Fletcher. That was the last home game. And uh, they scored big points away at Winnington Park. Uh, when it looked like the side was a little bit on the ropes. They were missing quite a few key players. Those key players are going to come back this weekend, and we're seeing uh, what I'm going to call the big names coming back into the team. Sammy McDonald wasn't available at Scrum Half for the Winnington Park trip. She's back this week. Uh, uh, Leona McGovern, the captain, not available. She's back this week. Um... Jules Harrison, uh, try scorer, big strike runner as Jules in the centres. She wasn't available for Winnington Park. She's back. Lauren Ellison is going to be in the centres this week. Again, wasn't available for Winnington Park, but back this week. So having all those players back, massive boost for Vagabonds. And I even see who I'm going to rate as the, their best asset, Malin Campbell. Uh, Malin Campbell actually starting or named on the bench for this weekend. So uh, Vagabonds obviously feeling a little bit confident. They're going to have a good crowd up there. They've got the under-15s kicking off at 12 o'clock, ladies at 12.45. Um, and the men will be there as well for their kickoff a little bit later at uh, 2 o'clock. Um, that means there's going to be a lot of people at Bella Fletcher. That support is going to be very important for the girls. Uh, they like to have a bit of noise on the touchline. They like to sit here, get the feeling that everybody's there to support them. And, and I'm sure every, we'll, we'll get a decent crowd up there as well. So uh, things are looking good for them. And Berry potentially are, are a team they should be able to pick off. 
And actually, just speaking, just looking at the table here, Berry, of course, at second from bottom, they've uh, lost their opening two, uh, two ties and uh, 43 points four at the moment, so the lowest in the league, perhaps not surprisingly, but uh, they don't seem to give too many points away during games, I guess. Yeah, and uh, that's the difficult thing. Uh, Vagabond's going to have to work hard to break down the visitors' defence. They did against Eccles. It took a little while, and Eccles looked a little bit sharper in their last home game. But uh, Vagabond's fair play to them. They dug in uh, two from Jules Harrison, one from Merlin Campbell. I think the other was from Becky Dunn. And uh, they managed to get their four tries and uh, a reasonably convincing win in the end. Um, whether or not they'll be able to repeat the fact it's a different couple of fish altogether. Uh, one player I did notice back into the squad was uh, Chloe Dillon. Uh, Chloe was out on the wing, uh, looked a little bit nervous in the first couple of seasons she played. Uh, she's had time off for uh, maternity. She's back now, and uh, she made a great try save and tackle against Barry and uh, against Barry against Eccles uh, a fortnight ago. Uh, really impressive for her just coming back in. Uh, I thought the wing went past her, she was done and dusted, but no, she turned round, gave chase, brought the player down, and Vagas were able to clear the danger. So even the players who weren't the big names in the team, I guess, are, are starting to uh, look impressive on the field. So uh, fingers crossed for Vagas, I'm sure they can do well. And not just this weekend, but I suppose in, in the short to medium term, almost still a long way to go in the season. But third in the table at the moment, three points behind Eccles in second, who in turn eight points off the base of Winnington Park ladies uh, at the top, who've won four from four and uh, already established themselves a, a commanding position at the top. But for Vagabonds ladies, in the short to medium term, what do you think would be a, an achievement for them? Well, I think top three. Uh, Jack Kane, the coach, was here uh, on week one, and uh, Jack said top three was what they were aiming for. Ideally, they'd want to be promoted. Um, they were close enough last season. As usual, at the lower end of the league structure, uh, there are um, uh, reshuffles of the league composition during the summer, and that's to give the teams a balance between travelling distances and uh, mismatches on the field. Uh, you get promoted, you get to a certain level and you're going to be playing teams of a similar quality to you. But down near the lower end of the uh, divisions, uh, it is all about that uh, trying to balance between travel and mismatch. And if uh, the league get it wrong with the composition, you find yourself shipping large points every week. And if they, or alternatively, you have traveling big distance. Now, from the Isle of Man, it's always going to be a flight or a boat. Uh, so the distance doesn't really matter as long as it's within about half an hour of an airport or a seaport. Uh, but for the clubs in the UK, travelling from, I don't know, Duckingfield and East Manchester up to Carlisle is a real big hike. So uh, it's important there geographically for the uh, league organisers to get things right. Well, uh, plenty for Vagabonds ladies to think about this weekend. The Vagabonds ladies uh, squad has been announced, and it is as follows. Becca Hicks, Ella Goodwin-Jones, Maisie Murray, Hannah Kissack, Georgina Quayle, Iona Lee, Sophie Henry, Greba Tasia, Sammy McDonald, uh, Becky Dunn, Lauren Ellison, Captain Leona McGovern, Jules Harrison, Bliss Murtar, Holly Shea, and the uh, substitutes Freya Crow, Chloe Dillon, Malin Campbell, Charlotte Hurd, Sandy Dawson, and Jacinta Tasia. Well, after that, it's the turn of the Vagabonds men's side it's been uh, to coin one of Dave's terms a, a bit of a, a completely different kettle of fish for them in terms of Counties 3 ADM Lancashire Cheshire a tough start for them and they're coming up against Berry men's and this looks to be a, a very different challenge doesn't it because Berry one of the top sides in Counties 3 at the moment Vagabond still to get those uh, big points on the board Indeed, uh, Berry are one of only two sides in Counties 3 that have a 100% record. Uh, they've played four, they've won four, and they have a bonus point in every game as well. Uh, that indicates they're going to fancy their chances, I would think, come the end of the season. And uh, Vagabonds are uh, less sure on the pitch, and uh, they're going to have their work cut out for them, I think. Um, you never know, though. There have been uh, bigger surprises. It is England versus New Zealand. There are a lot of players uh, all heading down to Twickenham to watch that game. And if Berry suffer disproportionately, uh, they may not be as strong as they normally would be. Uh, that said, I've, I've had a look through the Vagabond squad. Uh, missing Mitch Wells from the front row. Matt Rockwell's had to switch to uh, prop forward. Uh, there's a shuffle around in the back row as well. Tom Gascoigne's out playing in the centres instead of uh, the number eight. And they've got Matty Jones in there at eight. 
Harvey Collister, the man you'd want out on your wing, probably for his exciting and dynamic running. He's going to get a go at seven. Uh, so that tells me that uh, Vagabonds are a little bit stretched this weekend, quite possibly due to uh, Twickenham attendance. Uh, elsewhere, the, the squad looks fine. I, I don't see any other issues on there, but uh, just noticing Matt Rockwell having to switch to prop and uh, Gavin Turnbull as well dropping into second row. Uh, you'd expect to see him in the back row. Uh, Turnbull and Gascoigne uh, working with Matty Jones in the back row. That's quite impressive. But uh, uh, you're pulling Gavin Turnbull into the second row and all of a sudden uh, it may be a little bit less dynamic in the back row. But uh, uh, it remains to be seen. But at the moment, Barry must start as overwhelming favourites. And just to add on to that, if you actually look at the table here, as you mentioned, quite rightly, Berry in third with five wins from five, but also noticeably uh, points four hundred eighty-seven, which fits in with where they are on the table, but uh, only 74 points against. That's the lowest of any team in the league. So even if, Dave, as you say, there is the possibility maybe some players can't travel, they're still a very tough nut to crack. Yeah, undoubtedly, but uh, they have got a low uh, a low concession rate. They've played one game less than everybody else too, and uh, I I wouldn't read too much into that. But uh, when well five or six games in now, we're starting to get a picture of who looks likely to be a challenger or a contender, and who looks likely to not be. And uh, it's starting to emerge that Berry are likely to be a contender, and Vagabonds probably aren't going to be. Uh, looking at the results so far, but uh, I'm sure the guys have worked hard in training. The coaches have worked really hard as well, and I'm sure they'll be given their 100% tomorrow. But uh, whether or not it's enough to beat Berry, I don't think so. Yeah, just a bit of context before we get to the Vagabonds team news of where teams are on the table. Garstang top six wins from six ahead of De La Salle, the Salford Bay side six wins from six. Uh, Garstang have six try bonus points, De La Salle with four, so that's the difference between the two sides. Garstang on 30, De La Salle on 28, Berry in third on 25 points, so three points behind, but with that game in hand as well. And as we've just mentioned as well, the fewest points against so far this season in that division. Vagabonds all the way down in 12th at the moment with uh, six defeats from six, just the one try bonus point and losing bonus bonus points so far has them two points on the board might take something special from Vagabond's men to uh, overturn what is an informed Berry side this is the Vagabond's men squad taking on Berry tomorrow in Counties 3 ADM Lancashire Cheshire it is uh, Joe Lau Will Spurway Matthew Rockwell Gavin Turnbull John Ferguson Jed Snell Harvey Collister Matthew Jones Tom Neeson the captain Daniel Bonwick John Riley Paul Howard Tom Gascoigne Rob Pease and Regan Williams and the three substitutes for Vagabond's men are Lewis Horton Casella and Pearson and Ben Roberts and uh, just very quickly before we move on rugby wise it's not just senior rugby in action there is the third of a triple header taking place between Vagabonds and Berry, but it's an under 15s friendly and also Berry's under 15s will be taking on another island side as well and over the course of the weekend yes uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me there are two under 15 tour games um I'm not sure whether they're taking advantage of the new steam packet rules or not. Hopefully they are. Uh, Berry bringing over men, women and juniors, so under 15s against Vagabonds is at 12 o'clock at Bala Fletcher tomorrow and against Ramsey at 11 o'clock at the Murick Park on Sunday morning. So, uh, yeah, Berry juniors are really getting their work over this weekend. And not just from Berry's side of things, but for, for Ramsey and Vagabonds as well, uh, some important match experience at that point in their in their playing days. Yeah, at the under-15 level, we're starting to get towards transitioning players to adult or senior rugby, and it's important for them to get plenty of game time, and, and that's the thing that they really lack being on the island, so touring side bringing over under-15s, uh, it's like manna from heaven. Um, I know um, the clubs will be taking their sides away. We've had Southern Nomads with an under-16s away in, in the Cheshire Cup already. I think Ramsey have had an under-15s team away at New Brighton as well. So there's uh, plenty of rugby action there for them, but uh, sometimes you have to work a little bit hard to get it. Indeed, Dave, thank you very much indeed for your time. So uh, just a reminder, as, as Dave did point out before, if you are heading down to Bala Fletcher to watch the rugby or otherwise, uh, just be aware it is likely to be extremely busy down there with that triple header of uh, rugby taking place and also football fixtures on the uh, pitches adjacent to them as well. Going to be turning our attention to hockey in a few moments as well and crunch time it is across the Mixed Cup competitions. We'll be back in just a couple of moments. Look forward to a cleaner, greener future by switching to gas with Isle of Man Energy. You'll get a future future ready smart boiler with smart controls and 10 years servicing included and on top of reducing your local carbon emissions with a state-of-the-art boiler and cleaner fuel isle of man energy will remove that dirty old oil tank all from just 25 pounds 20 per month 
Think greener and find out more today. Visit isleofmanenergy.im and click switch to gas. Quadlock is the strongest and most secure mounting system in the world for integrating your phone, camera or accessories into your outdoor pursuits and for your car, van or motorhome. See the Quadlock display at H&H Motorcycles in South Key, Douglas. In beautiful Silverdale Glen, Balasala, find your perfect home away from home at Trail Lodge. If you're looking for a staycation this autumn, Trail Lodge is the perfect retreat with stays as short as one night available. So book now. Terms and conditions apply. Vouchers for Trail Lodge are also perfect for anniversaries, presents, corporate gifts and more. Ideal for surprise 2025 getaways. Trail Lodge, Silverdale Glen, Balasala. Visit traillodge.im or search Trail Lodge on Facebook. Remember, remember, Douglas Fireworks on the 5th of November. This year's fireworks display in Douglas will be bigger and better than ever. The fun kicks off at 7pm on the promenade with the Best Guy competition. Please ensure all guys are registered by 6.45pm. Then at 7.30, the fireworks display will light up the bay for a spectacular show choreographed to music from the movies. Douglas Fireworks, Tuesday, November 5th. Brought to you by Douglas City Council, sponsored by Selton Manx and supported by Manx Radio. Manx Radio Sport. Turning our attention to hockey now and the spotlight is going to be back on the mixed cup competitions because all the sides taking part across the three competitions now know they are potentially just one step away from a final. The semi-finals of the mixed cup, mixed plate and mixed ball taking place across both Douglas and Peel throughout tomorrow and joining us as usual is our hockey correspondent Ben Cunningham. Ben, very good evening. Evening Rob. Let's take a look. Before we actually get to that, we'll take a look at uh, some of the action that took place throughout the week because we had three mixed Premier League games taking place that were due to take place last weekend. They were postponed because of the Isle of Man senior national teams uh, being in England hockey competition. So taking a look at those uh, three fixtures, four games were postponed. The fourth of those, Bacchus versus Valkyze, is uh, still to be rearranged, we understand. Yeah, that's still uh, on the cards to be arranged, but hopefully within the next week or so we should have that game rescheduled and played. But it's a massive game, definitely, that needs to be uh, done. Yeah, back as a top of the league at the moment against Valkyrie. Still trying to keep themselves in with a shout. Valkyrie, of course, the defending mixed Premier League champions. The three games that took place, uh, we did see Vikings A challenging towards the uh, top of the table up against the Valkyrie's B side, desperate to get points on the board. Ben, it was always going to be tough for them. But Vikings A, they move level with back as a on points, but behind on goal difference and haven't played a game more. But it's points on the board, a 4 0 win over Valkyrie's B there. Yeah, a big result for Vikings, like we say, and not the result that Valkyrie's B will want because it's uh, more pressure on them now to uh, get some more points in this uh, remain in the re- what fixtures remain in the uh, in coming weeks but yeah uh, crunch time really for Valkyries B they'll despa- desperately be wanting to get something out of any of the games now and also on Tuesday night saw the meeting of uh, two sides in mid-table at the moment both having steady campaigns at the moment Cast Town Celts and Vikings B and it finished at one apiece there who do you think will be the happier of the two sides with that result? I to be honest with you, I think Vikings B will be the happier of the two sides of that because they've uh, got they've got a point out of that game against the Castletown side, which they've been phenomenal really most of the se- this season, uh, and they have been challenging the top teams. But Vikings just getting that point just pushes them that step away from being in that relegation battle. So I think Vikings B will be the happier of the two sides. Yeah, up against the Castletown Celt side, who, as we've seen over the last few years, have the capabilities to, to, oh, to yeah. upset the big hitters in that, Absolutely. In that league. And the other game that took place between Harlequins A and uh, Backers B, a closely fought affair here. Harlequins A just about coming out on top. You and Wiley with the one and only goal there to see Harlequins A win 1 0. Yeah, a massive, massive goal for uh, the Harlequins side there over a Backers B side, who, yet again, they. They're desperate to look for more points because if they can get any more points out of their remaining games, it piles more pressure on to uh, Valkyrie's B, definitely. But a uh, big goal there for you and Wiley. Um, and uh, I do hear news that, potent- well, soon he will be leaving uh, the and um, moving moving on to uh, further field. So uh, big, a big time at Harlequins there. Maybe a good goal for to maybe have a bit of a sign-off. 
Maybe, yeah, and, the, and that result means that Harlequins, they stay fifth in the mixed Premier League, but they've closed the gaps to cast down Gelts above them to one point. Backers B, they remain second from bottom on uh, two points. But uh, like you say, Ben, from a Backers B perspective, um, a respectable scoreline that didn't go their way, but they'll want to try and get just a little something on the board to keep themselves away from the bottom. Absolutely, they'll want to be making sure that they can get any points possible because all it takes is for Valkyries B to get a result somewhere and it's game back on again. They'll be level on points with uh, backers B. However, for backers B, it's a case if they need to make sure that they keep up their good form and not slip up because they are in that relegation battle with Valkyries B. And as we mentioned, that fourth postponed mixed Premier League game from last weekend, backers A versus Valkyries A, uh, that is still uh, to be rearranged on a date and time to be confirmed. Turning our attention then back to this weekend and the mixed cup competition semi-finals will start with the uh, highest tier competition, the mixed cup. Both games taking place at the NSC. <coughs> Excuse me. Early pushback at five past eleven sees uh, backers A, the current Premier League mixed Premier League leaders, up against Harlequins A. Now, Ben, when these two teams met in the league, at least backers A came out on top, but only by one. Yeah, only by one goal. So this could be a really close uh, fought match. Uh, like we say, Harlequins had a, of course, Harlequins had a midweek game, whereas backers didn't. So hopefully, the uh, Harlequins side has. Uh, you know, recovered and it won't affect them into this game this weekend. Uh, but a massive game because, of course, uh, the winners of it will play the next fixture, which we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, backers, they, they'll want to definitely keep their hands on the uh, the uh, the cup in this fixture because they, the, uh, they are the current uh, cup holders. So a big game for Harlequins to see if they can beat the cup holders. And your umpires for this game are Paul Hunter and George Powell. And the other one straight after the NSC is an interclub derby, Vikings A, chasing back as A at the top of the mixed Premier League, up against their own B team, Vikings B. Yeah, that I think could be a really good game, between the two uh, sides there. Of course, you would favour the A team to come out on top, but I'm sure the B team will definitely give their A team uh, a good game and uh, not make it easy for them. But like you say, it's going to be a, a good game. And I mean, you're a... Should we put it an ex Vikings player? I think that's a fair assessment. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what these derbies are like, and uh, I'm sure you you could easily say a few comments about them. But yeah, the, I'm sure it'll be a thrilling game. And your umpires for this one are Jamie Brown and Gareth Room. Quickly taking a look through the other competitions, the mixed plate semi finals, one o'clock at QE2, both games at QE2 in Peel. The first of those at one o'clock sees uh, Valkyrie C up against Ramsey A. Valkyrie C not had an ideal start to the season so far, Ben. Uh, Ramsey A maybe just not quite meeting their own expectations at the moment, not quite toward the top of Division 1 at the moment. No, both sides have had a mixed bag of a season. That's probably the best way of putting it. So this, is, this could be a close game. However, though, Valkyries recently have really found some form and they did hold the league leaders in Division 1 to a free-all draw. And Ramsey, though, they have had a few little slip-ups in the season. So I'm sure they'll want to make sure that they can get a good cup run. And your umpires for this one are June Belando and Tim Lehman. And it could be a big opportunity for either of those two because the game after them at 3pm at QE2 and Peel is the meeting of the Mixed Division 2 top two. Back as C, top of the table, up against Castown Southern as second placed. Yeah, th that's going to be a massive game. Um, and as I put in my report, which is on Manx Radio uh, website, uh, when these two sides met in the league, they could not be split. And of course, as we know in cup competitions, Rob, if it's a level pegging at full time, we go to penalty flick shootout and that could, I think, happen in this game. So big, massive game for this one. And your umpires for this one are Helen Cowley and Sandra Smith. That's the mixed plate semifinals. And uh, finally, the mixed bowl semifinals. Uh, 11.05 at QE2 in Peel. Valkyries D, they'll be looking to try and keep up a, a better cup run because it's been tough in the league for them. They're up against a Backers Colts team that have been steady so far this season. Absolutely, yeah. Valkyries will definitely want to make sure that they can keep their good cup run up. Of course, the league's not been too nice for them, but they are finding form. Uh, it's just getting the result. However, though, Backers Colts have looked really good in the league and they are... Uh, sitting in a better position than what Valkyrie's D are. So I'm going to go for a Backers Colts win on this one. And your umpires for this one are Chris Wells and Sam Franklin. And finally on Saturday, the other mixed bowl semi-final, three o'clock at the NSC in Douglas. Castletown Camags up against the uh, current mixed Division 2 leaders, Harlequins B, who still boast a perfect record, I believe, Ben. 
They do. And uh, these two sides met just last week in the league. So uh, it's a, a rematch of uh, last week's game. So can Camags uh, turn things around? They were on the receiving end of a 3 0 loss last weekend. But like you say, Rob Harlequins be yet to drop any points this season. Uh, can they do it and can they go on and get the double? The way they're playing at the minute. I think that they can, and I think it is going to be a Harlequins B win on this one, but I'm sure Camags will give them a good game, and your umpires for this one are Louise Corkill and our up-and-coming young umpire, Lucy Cartwright. And just finally, Ben, before we uh, we round things off for the evening, uh, again, just a little bit of a look back to last weekend. We've mentioned already uh, the Isle of Man uh, national sides were in action. We had uh, the two uh, senior men's and two senior ladies teams. We also had the boys under 18s involved. Oh, oh no, my apologies. We didn't have the men's B team playing the men's B at the weekends. Playing. With the men's A, we had the ladies A and B and then the under 18 boys. Three of the four teams winning their England Hockey Knockout Championship games. That was the uh, the ladies A, the men's A and the boys under 18s. Uh, the ladies be with a very respectable outing despite the defeat um, how positive is that going into the rest of the season oh it's really good it was great to hear that all the teams that went away last weekend came back with good results of course it's a shame that the ladies B uh, were on the receiving end of a, a narrow 2-0 uh, defeat but the reports that we've had from all the captains were just the island teams did themselves proud and it, there's not much more we could ask for them. They just went out there, they represented the island, had the island jerseys on and they did their uh, Manx hockey proud. Well, Ben, thank you very much indeed for your time and uh, thank you as well for uh, for joining us this evening. Many thanks to our guests, our ho- hockey correspondent Ben Cunningham there, our football correspondent Tony Meppham, also Onken first team manager in the football inside of things, James O'Kelly, our guest this week, and our rugby correspondent Dave Christian as well. And don't forget as well, if you want to catch up on anything that's been said in tonight's programme, you will be able to catch up on it later on this evening. It will be available as a podcast on the Manx Radio website. And speaking of the Manx Radio website, if you want to catch up with uh, the sporting news from across the Isle of Man and beyond, on today or even more than that all is available over on the manx radio sports hub at uh, manxradio.com thank you for joining us have yourself a wonderful friday evening whatever you're doing and have yourself a wonderful weekend as well but from me until next time it's bye for now manx radio sport